bird on a tree. I'm just sitting here. I got time. It's clear to see from up here. Hello, everyone. This is Monica Ramirez, Warrior of Love. I am a transformational relief coach. And today we have a, a very curious uh, interview that I, I, I encounter this amazing man. His name is David, I hope I don't butcher his last name, Elija. That's... Uh, it's uh, Elijah. That's Elijah. actually, I, people usually use my first name, Elijah, but it's Elijah David, yeah. Elijah David. The prophet and the king from, yes. from the Old Testament. <laughs> that's right, that's right. I'm not religious, though. I want to make that clear straight away. <laughs> no, but I, my second name is Maria, and I am not even religious, neither. <laughs> <laughs> Maria in, in Mexico, it is the Mother Mary, something like that. But no, I'm not yeah. really religious. But our part, my parents was. <laughs> And he's, uh, he's in Australia, and, uh, but he had a very interesting topic that he have wrote books, that he have, um, he's teaching this. It is about the 13 travelers at Orion Porto Keeper. And that's what he brought my attention. And, uh, and even if you read his posts and uh, everything, it is so, so, so interesting that you don't want to miss it. Actually, you want to follow it because it is very right into the point. At least it resonates completely with me. And I've been uh, reading a lot of his posts and my God, some of them are really that I was needing to hear. And I, I really appreciate your you accepting my invitation, Elijah. And uh, tell Thank us you. how it got you there. How do... How do you got uh, of the, and tell us a little bit about what is the 13 travelers at the Orion Porto Keepers? How did I get there? Okay, well, that's obviously quite a long story, but I'll try and keep it to 10 minutes or so. Um, actually, I want to start from the end rather than at the beginning, because um, I have a friend, actually, I was on a Zoom call this morning that I organized a few people, and um, he gave me an understanding of what I'd been writing about. He basically put it in, in a capsule that, or um, a way that's very simple, like a formula for consciousness. Now, I don't use the word God because the moment you say God, uh, well, most people understand you're putting him, it's usually a him, outside of yourself. And, um, but from my point of view, you're also creating <clears throat> separation because um, there's something apart from you. And um, uh, we live in, in this realm, in this dimension that we're living in, we live in a realm of relationships. So consciousness is expressing itself through the process of relationship. Now the formula was uh, consciousness is observing and being form and formlessness. So just to explain that further, uh, I'm using the word consciousness, which is uh, we're all one consciousness and form is self-explanatory. We're form in a body and also we're surrounded by nature and things. And uh, then there's formlessness. Well, formlessness is, is uh, something that people experience whether they know it or not. Uh, but it becomes more obvious when, for me, I'll speak for myself, when I go into a deep state of meditation where my mind ceases and there's no thought. And in that space, there's no me and that. There's no meditator and experience. There is only pure being and pure existence. So... Um, uh, that formula, when, when it kind of gels and it comes together uh, for people, we're not really individuals, as we'll probably talk more about later, but uh, when it all comes together in one harmony, then 
it becomes unity consciousness. And unity consciousness is everything. But the, but the thing that really holds it together, the thing that really uh, makes it such an inspiration is we are unity consciousness, and so therefore we are boundless love. And I love to call it, I, I wrote a post, and it came to me that um, I am, in fact, love without a purpose. And that sounds a bit strange, maybe at first, but because people think, well, if, you know, if I'm a loving, compassionate being, I'm going to save the world, I'm going to save lots of individuals, you know, I'm going to, and, and then from that kind of feeling of doing something with the love, there comes, you know, a whole plethora of um, healings and workshops and all of those things. And also there comes the idea of ascended masters and uh, angels, archangels and angels. And they, they, then it becomes a whole hierarchy, like a, a ladder between yourself and the source. Of course, in reality, there is no ladder and there is the source is everywhere. Uh, so I'll just tell you a little bit about my life and how I kind of got to be where I am now. Um, I just want to tell a couple of little anecdotes about my childhood first. Um, when, when my parents were still together, because they divorced when I was 16, um, my mother had a beautiful cottage in England, in the West Country of England. And um, there was a beautiful, it was called Lyme Regis, you know, Regis meaning the king visited. <laughs> and uh, there was something called the Cobb, which was the harbour, was a granite harbour, which was about 700 years old. And the granite harbour was two tiers. So if I can kind of just draw it, it had a, an outer tier and then below it, it had a, another tier. So it was kind of like that. And this tier, the higher one, pointed to the Atlantic. So when the waves rolled in in a storm, which I loved, they would hit the granite harbour. And um, I would position myself. Well, the first thing I would do is, is, is that the wall was kind of curved as it went round to its seaward side. And when the waves hit it, they would rush over, spray up about a hundred feet in the air, and they would come raining down on the inner side. And I would love to run as fast as I could. You remember I'm only 10, okay? So I'm running as fast as I could around this bend um, on the inside. And if I can just get there in time, then uh, I don't get wet. There's nothing raining down on me. So um, the point I would run to was called the granny's teeth. <laughs> and there was a, the, the inside of the upper tier had these, well, teeth, they were uh, granite teeth. And near the top of the wall, if I stood on the second to the top and looked over into the abyss, I could see these waves rolling, this, this kind of white waves rolling towards me. And um, I would duck down at the right moment, it was all about timing. And then the wave would rush over the top of me, but uh, I wouldn't get wet, it would just go into the harbor. Anyway, one day I was kind of dreaming away and um, I, um, I ducked down too late. I didn't get the timing right. And I was swept off the pier onto the lower level, swept off the teeth onto the lower level. And um, <laughs> I landed on my head, pretty much full force. And I just got up and walked away as if nothing had happened. And um, well, <laughs> I jokingly say, of course, that probably that's probably why I'm mad to this day. <laughs> anyway, my life took many strange and wonderful twists and turns. And um, maybe I'll jump quite a long way. I, I had a I had a guru, but I left him because I after a few years, I became totally disillusioned with the um, the organization that sprang up around him. And then when he abolished the organization, he started to um, uh, give his knowledge, his initiation online. And um, uh, it, it was like, it became very impersonal, just like so many of these teachers now online. And... Um, and so between that and the um, corruption in the organized, see, the problem with teachers is they have what I call a shadow. And the shadow is that um, everyone 
their followers will be just jostling around to try and be the, the closest one to the teacher. And it becomes like a competition. And um, so anyway, I don't want to dwell on gurus and stuff. Uh, it, basically, I'll jump right through to a, around about the 1990s when I'd already many years before left my guru. And in the 1990s, I went through a series of experiences, which I may get to talk about tonight. Um, experiences with sacred sexuality, um, not Tantra as Western people know it. Um, experiences with um, uh, relationship in other ways, like, um, um, what was it called? Not NLP, but similar to LN NLP where you learn how to um, get over differences between people to clear the differences away, emotional differences. And um, then um, in the early part of, uh, no, it was uh, actually, in, yeah, the early part of uh, 21st century, um, the 2000s, I met a very amazing woman. Her name was Gabrielle. And um, uh, I'll talk about um, my other name later, which is L O Ra. But L happens to occur in all, pretty much all the angels' names have L in them. And she was amazing. She really was amazing. And she was um, educated in, or she was actually an educator. Eventually, she became a, a professor in um, English literature. So she was very well spoken spoke really beautiful English in, in a very intelligent way. And um, uh, she had done, um, well, she gave me the name David to add to Elijah, I already had Elijah. And she said, you're full of love and you're David. And um, she, it's just a short, interesting story about her is that back in 1987, she was um, in her bedroom with her husband and uh, her teenage son was, son was in a room next door. And um, in the middle of the night, about 2 a.m., a figure of light was standing at the bottom of her bed. And um, her reaction, which I think probably would be for most people, it wasn't one of like, oh, yes, you know, this messenger has come to me. It was like, who are you in my bedroom? You know, get out of here immediately. and. And anyway, after a bit of a, uh, her saying this a few times, he finally spoke and he said, she said, who are you? Who are you? And he, he said, I am, I am Francis. Francis of Assisi, you know me as in your world. And um, at that point, she was still kind of, she was actually standing up on the bed against the wall. And her husband, who had heard the conversation but couldn't see, uh, pulled her down to his uh, lap and comforted her. And um, and so the next day when she woke up, she packed all of her things up in her bags and she left her home. She left her husband and her son and she went on this global trotting journey. Um, and the interesting thing about her uh, that that is very strong in my life is that Whenever she became popular, she moved to a new town and she'd give a few talks and then all of a sudden everyone wanted to know her. She would just leave and move to the next town. You know, people wouldn't know where she was going. And so um, she was continually uh, uh, taking away this idea of teacher, someone I can hang on to. And uh, she disappeared out of my life actually about six months later, but in the meantime, she she gave me quite a, a personal gift and that we had coffee together on numerous occasions and, and just talked about dimensions and stuff. So um, here I am today and um, I've got two groups on Facebook. Um, I do a lot of one-on-ones with people. Um, I started to do interviews, this is the second one I've done. The reason why I waited so long is that, um, well, I, I was already doing Zoom groups for the last four years. So 
I have been doing live video, but it's been groups, not one on one. And um, I, I love Zoom groups because uh, it's, it's, the Zoom groups have no agenda whatsoever. Goes back to this woman, Gabriel, really. So everyone just comes to the meeting and there's two invitations, really. One is to be uh, the presence of love and the other is to be to dare to be empty. <laughs> because, you know, when we listen to other people, I don't know if you're experiencing that now, but um, Melissa, but um, sorry, Monica, uh, but, um, you know, you tend to think, well, what am I going to ask next or what am I going to say next? And uh, attentive listening is such a gift. The greatest thing you can give to other people is to be totally attentive. And um, so these groups are very loving and very much the next step, I think, to, to get ready for and to get familiar with the energies of the new earth that's coming. Anyway, I think I'll leave it there for now and see what, see where you want to go next, Monica. I do. I, I want. I have several questions because I did not want to interrupt or I wanted to put attention. I just write it down so like that I don't forget what I was going to ask you, and mm -hmm. so I can put attention. That's how I do it, and I do agree with you. There are tons of mistakes with the gurus. I believe the time of the gurus already ended a while back. Mm. Uh, I don't. Cons I teach classes and so forth, and I don't consider myself a guru. Because that's that's a that's a concept of the ego, in a way. It is um, how I can put it. People when they start admiring someone so much and the ego goes to their head, they forget that they're also working as they are the rest of the people. And your teacher and your students also become your teachers at the same time. You're learning in things that they're making you react that you have to work with yourselves and so forth so you can change your state of conscience. When we're, this is gonna stop? I don't know, our learning, it may never stop because we're still healing, we're still learning, we're still growing, we're still expanding our conscience. And this applies, like I tell my students, many of them, even the Dalai Lama has issues. <laughs> That's why he's still in this plane. So there is not such a thing, someone that, oh, it's already illuminated and it's already here teaching us. That time, even Jesus, I bet he had things he had to work with himself. Yes, he will share whatever he learned, but it was things that he also, he was needing to work with. And, uh, and that's why, and the many of my, in my experience with the gurus and shamans and so forth, and I have some of them in my family, um, that's why I don't believe in them. They forget that they still have to work with themselves or else their ego goes to their head and, uh, and they lose themselves. And when the people are admiring them, that's when they, they feel heartbroken or disappointed. But in reality, at the same time, the guru did not break their heart or they did not disappoint them. The expectations are, or the people are the ones that get broken. That's in my experience, and I say it because I, I never had I never had accepted any teacher or any guru, because I was born in a family of that, and uh, and they taught me uh, that everybody were listening to them and they see him as the great guru or the great shaman or whatever, but I was the sister and I knew the defects and I knew what they have to work and I knew what. The, and and that's one of the reasons why I don't. That's why I don't. I don't put. I don't give that expectations to them because I don't want to. Be later on heartbroken too at the same time because I know who they are and we all start. If we're here in this plane is because we're still learning and advancing and growing. If not, we would not. I don't think no human beings that we are not. We can be compassionate. We can have love. Yes but we're here also because we're healing ourselves. That's, that's what I believe and that's what I think and that's my experience have given me in respect of the gurus. And, uh, but you haven't answered me a very important question that I ask you. 
what is what is the 13 travelers of the Orient for all of keepers? It is the mm -hmm. name of the group or or you're a time traveler? What it means? Yeah, I'm a, time tra I'm a time traveler. But but the first thing I should say is that um, uh, there's two ways to time travel. One is to take your body, uh, which is could be called teleporting, mm -hmm. a bit like Star Wars, you know, or some what, no, what was it called? Um, that that show, you know, with the uh, the spacecraft. Um, anyway, uh, you either take your um, body with you. Uh, uh, or you go in a spacecraft, uh, which is actually, uh, um, these people are far in advance, these um, uh, star races that, that use these craft, they're far in advance of humanity, maybe a million years or, so, or, or more in their technology. Um, but, but still, whenever you need a spacecraft to move from one place to another, then that's limited. It's uh, it's uh, traveling by separation, and um, the truly highest beings are made of pure light, and uh, they still have some degree of separation, so they still have relationship with other light beings, but they they either don't fly in spacecraft at all, or they have spacecraft that are that are intelligent, uh, like. Um, uh, you know, like uh, just completely can you can give them directions and the spacecraft will actually follow you. Um, so um, that's not really as advanced as just being able to travel by the mind. So once you overcome, once you get to a point where you drop the full sense of self, then uh, you have access to anywhere. You're basically here, there, and everywhere at the same time. You're also, I've talked about being in thoughtless meditation. You're both here and there, but you are that experience that you have in meditation. So it's not separate from you. Um, and also the one I like is we are lover, loving, and loved. So, Coming back to the, th the 13 time travelers, um, I'm in the earthly plane, and so I speak for the other 12. Um, they just, um, when I'm writing or speaking or acting or all of those things, then uh, the consciousness flows through me. And I usually, I'm, right now I'm talking, but if I'm writing, then the words just come through and often there'll be words that I haven't used since my childhood or when I was being educated I was quite well educated in a private school in England um, and uh, I'll see them and I'll think oh wow you know there's a word I haven't used in a long time and then some of them I can't understand so I have to actually go and look them up in a dictionary <laughs> so um, I love this yeah I love this process of representing the um the other 12 travelers now some people say well do you know who they are and well there are a couple that i've got clues about but uh, basically that's not important because uh i, I need to sh talk about the sacred geometry of these beings okay so just imagine um you can imagine it's on a piece of land okay imagine there's a sphere uh, a round sphere and you've dug it into the ground so that the equator of the sphere is at ground level and imagine when you walk in one of four doors it's all aspected perfectly to north south east and west when you walk in one door you, you find a, a circular desk but it's it's, it's not um not a full circle it has a circle in a, a blank circle in the middle so it's like a strip of desks okay so you sit down and there are 12 chairs and they're swivel chairs. So they turn 360 degrees, right? And um, so of course the beauty of them is that you can, um, when someone's talking, not only do you listen very intently, but you also can look at them, anyone in the room, any one of the other 11, you can look in straight in their eyes. And of course, everyone's connected by breathing. I'll talk more about sound because I'm uh, my love affair with, consciousness it, it, it comes through sound which i'll talk more about so um 
So you sit around on this a circular desk on the swivel chairs, and if you don't like what's being said, or if you've got something else to do, you can actually turn around in the opposite direction. Then there's a flap in the desk, and this is a vision I've had, by the way, and it comes from Atlantis, but it's not, it's not coming. None of my information comes from the internet. Um, it's all just what I receive. And I'm not a channeler. I want to make that clear because the way I'm talking now about the 12 and me would appear that I'm channeling the other 12. But actually, they're aspects of me. They're, they're my 12 other lifetimes. And they're, they're all aspects of the same being, beingness. And so I'm not actually channeling. I'm just talking for them. And... Um, at this particular time on earth. Of course, there are Facebook's full of lots of ideas about the new earth or Gaia and who's gonna help us and who isn't. And again, I can talk about that too, but I'm not a great, it might seem a bit strange, but we're, we're on Zoom now, but I'm not a great um, uh, fan of the information that comes through Facebook from individuals and from groups, because most of it is just hearsay and conjecture. And also, as you said, um, Monica, uh, people are always looking for he spiritual help and, you know, going off to teachers and then they regurgitate what they're, they're learning. Okay. The thing is, sometimes the message is very good, but the problem is they idealize the messenger. And that's just, right. Just get the message and that's it. Don't idealize the messenger. The messenger is human and have their own experience and their own healing. Yeah, yeah. Let me just finish the sphere because it's very lovely. Um, it's it's got a white exterior. It's got a uh, the four doors and then at the at the apex of the roof, it's got a, a round um, skylight which lets in very beautiful light. And um, then it has. Um, a glass floor across the equator. So the floor is made of glass. It's half an inch thick plate glass. And beneath the floor is water. Uh, and usually it has crystals in it uh, or colored rocks. We, I, I have colored rocks and crystals and I actually put them in a, a lovely um, container, a glass container and put pour water over them because it brings out the color, you know. You, know, you find them on the beach and they're wet and they look amazing, but then you take them home and they look fairly dour. And I, I overcome that by putting them in water, spring water. Now, that's the important thing that, that this water under the floor, the glass floor, it, it, would, uh, it would need to be um, spring water from the property where this community is being built. And eventually, the, as, as you'll guess, the community includes actually includes two things, two sacred shapes, uh, which are livable, and one's the sphere and the other is a pyramid. Um, same shape as the pyramids in Egypt. So um, on special occasions, uh, one of the people, probably a woman, would lift the flap in the desk and she'd walk over the glass and right in the middle of the, um, uh, the floor, there's a, um, a metal grid with 12 spokes coming out. And right in the very center, there's another smallest sphere. And so uh, I am that in the center and I'm surrounded by the 12 and I am their, imagine a wheel with spokes. I am their spokesperson. <laughs> so um, yeah, that's probably it for the atmosphere. Um, I just want to say one one couple of things about um, uh, this thing with teachers is that um, I, I described a little bit how uh, I hold the Zoom meetings um, with you know the group ones, and um, uh, basically no one is the teacher. There's no agenda. I said before, but there's no teacher, so it's beautiful. So in in one moment I can be your teacher, and the next moment you can be my teacher, and everything is happening in its own timing. Sometimes I do a very bit of light facilitation, but generally speaking, uh, if there's a silence in the meeting, uh, then I invite people to enjoy that silence. 
silence is a golem because that's the space between things like um well i mean by that the space between things is in your busy day uh there are spaces you're you know you're held up in the queue at the bank or you're driving a car or, or whatever and there's always time to tune in you know like People say, well, I went on this retreat or, you know, I listened to this teacher and I became so tuned in. I, my mind had almost disappeared and all I experienced was laughter and love with all the people that were there. But then I went home to my job and my life and within days I felt totally estranged and totally out there again. Uh, well, of course, learning to enjoy the space between things is the way that you develop this love affair with consciousness throughout your day. And um, also, um, I've, got, uh, I've got that red, lovely Indian thing with sequins on it, but this wall here is um, just a bit off-white. But if I look at it, I can see it right now, it's just covered in little flashes everywhere. Uh, sometimes I, I call them wrigglies because they're either just flashing or they're wriggling. <laughs> Mm -hmm. um, same thing when you look at a blue sky that's really a good place to look for them um, in the daytime you see a blue sky and it's full of wrigglies um, and um, yeah so um, it's like a green it's, 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 like, not... it's like a green I, yes. I, yes I see that everywhere uh, that green so is it doesn't yeah. it's not visible all the time but sometimes when there's in the dusk or in the morning, it is easier to see it, to observe it. The green yes. everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. I see it when um, I just see it everywhere. Like I, I, I tr when I talk about the spaces between things, I kind of, um, I spend time looking at the corner of the room or I look vaguely out of the window at, at, at a branch of a tree blowing in the wind or I go into the, the bathroom and I stare at the um, tile floor and I start, I focus beneath the floor while I'm looking at it. So it gets depth. I'm turning the two dimensional world, sorry, the three dimensional world into um, a higher dimension where there's, uh, uh, there's thing up, things are happening on two levels or objects are happening on two levels. So um, yeah. What would you like to, have you got something have, else for me to speak to? Yes, I have, um, I want just to understand, I understand perfectly that uh, what you were saying, that you're not a channeler, because I am a channeler, but I also am an experiencer. I receive messages, but at the same time, I being in a spaceship, and, uh, and in that spaceship, I got to meet my family of the light that I was part of it. And uh, and I still remember the floor and everything. And it was, and the vibration on all of them. But I, I can't say how many they were. They just, uh, they just presented themselves with me. So like that, when they come and talk to me, even if I don't see them, I, I will know their vibration. And that's the messages that I receive. Uh, and I know specifically from where, because I've been there. If that's your case or or because I know there is a, a part of me right now in this moment that it is in a spaceship on top of my house and she's a Pleiadian and that's me at the same time because for for come on the 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 idea of, of time it is a, a construct of the human being because we were needing to force it and put it in a little square to understand it better but that became a limitant for all the human beings. So uh, that's, the, that's, that's what you're talking about, about the, the 12 beings that is you at the same time as it is here. So you're talking for yourself in a way. Yeah, I could get into another little story about that to explain where these um, the original star races came to Earth to help, and they are present on Earth now. Shall I tell that story? Yeah. So in 1948, there was this um, incident, famous incident called Roswell, uh, which was in New Mexico. And um, uh, basically two spacecraft crash landed, alien craft crash landed on Earth. And um, 
anyway, the upshot of all of this is uh, one of them survived uh, the crash and uh, survived. And eventually an alliance was formed between uh, that alien's race and actually a group of star beings that uh, have called themselves the Alliance or the Galactic Alliance, okay? So in the 1950s, um, uh, we, we were moving from into the age of computers, the very first computers, and very crude in those days, but still the, the idea was there of computing. And um, that silicon technology, which um, Monica, you and I are using right now, uh, is um, was given to us. And that's been developed in the 60 years or so since, to the point now where they have quantum computers, which is, the, actually they have them, but they haven't, uh, they haven't come out yet because um, they haven't yet perfected them. Um, so uh, a couple of interesting points of history um, since then. In 1960, President Eisenhower, the US president, was leaving office and he gave his last speech uh, on television and he warned the American public uh, that the biggest uh, threat was the, the um, military industrial complex, he called it. And um, so the, he left office and in, in the next, you know, obviously um, I, uh, Kennedy came in straight away um, and he, uh, Jack Kennedy, and then he, um, he wanted to get rid of the, um, the CIA and he, he, he started to put it in motion. And at the same time, he was going to get rid of the Central Reserve Bank of America, which is a private banking corporation that sets interest rates. And basically, they're a bunch of mafia outsiders, sorry, insiders. <laughs> they know what's going to happen on the stock market. So, um, uh, so if we jump to the present, this is a really interesting part for me. This is the reason I tell this story is that most, the, most of the people on Facebook, I'm, I'm talking probably 95%, maybe there's 5% that are really beginning to get this sense of oneness now. But even when you have a sense of oneness, if you have a sense that there's someone a secret world government or a Illuminati or a cabal or whatever they call it. And they're somehow, they're the bad guys, you know. And yes, I'm unconditional love, you know, I'm boundless love, but they're the bad guys. Mm -hmm. uh, it doesn't gel, it's just not, it just doesn't, it's, it's not true. It's not, um, it doesn't have any uh, authenticity about it. So um, a, a lot of people, and again, I, I love everyone, so I'll talk to anyone on Facebook, and every day I do. Um, so I have no judgment, um, but I, I I just notice that people are always. Uh, I'll tell you why they're like that. Is because when, when the very first this is another story, but I'm not going to tell it now. But when the very first um, the one split into two, it split into the father and mother, and just a very little part of the story, so you understand. Um, uh, the father and mother um, appeared, and then the father felt, she, he had felt disturbed by her movement because he'd been meditating for eons and eons and eons, and suddenly she started to move. Anyway, he pushed her into the void. She span off, and um, she was in pure terror. So... Terror and rage are the most primal emotions. But just to say something more about them, when you don't clear them prior to intimacy, then they get passed down to your offspring. Okay. So the people that I'm talking about on Facebook, you know, they're running off to teachers and they're running off to, you know, information. They're running here and there. And they're, you know, in all the Facebook groups. And, um, but underneath all of that active mental activity is this feeling of terror and rage, one of them or the other, or sometimes both at the same time, pretty much. And um, so this is the reason why people are constantly criticizing this, 
these beings. And of course, there is some cause to criticize them. They've kept this secret for quite a long time, uh, 60 years. And um, they are, um, uh, they appear to be hoodwinking us, you know, keeping, keeping everything away from us, especially if you go back to Nikolai Tesla and the advent, he, he, he um, invented a machine that would create free energy. Um, so um, uh, basically we've been denied a lot of technologies uh, over the 20th century in particular. Um, and um, so um, uh, they, so who are they? They are a group of um, star beings, as I said, star races, and they are um, allied to a, this faction. It's actually mainly in the military rather than the industrial complex, although they're in both. Um, uh, <coughs> they have a lot, of, they have technology, which I'll talk about in a minute, which we don't know about, okay? Um, but um, they, um, uh, the kind of bottom line of this really, the, the kind of cr crux of it is that look at what's happening right now. We've got this war in Ukraine between Russia and U Ukraine. Humanity still appears, the collective consciousness of humanity still appears to be very childlike and bellicose and dangerous. And so uh, this alliance feels that we're not ready for, for a galactic community civilization yet. So they're kind of waiting on the sidelines and um, there are various ways that, that this awakening could happen. Uh, the most perhaps obvious one is that some form of disclosure, it's known as disclosure, uh, whereby um, uh, these races are introduced in the public media um, and they get to um, express what they're doing. And of course that would be profoundly would uh, pretty much all of humanity overnight would be um, awakened through that just by knowing that we're not alone in, in the galaxy or the universe. And uh, yeah, just to come back to the, uh, their technology, um, they, I should say we have, but they have uh, uh, spacecrafts that uh, work on, they're called electrogravitic technology, electricity and gravity. And they actually bend space time. So, um, so the upshot of this is that we can go from Earth to Mars in eight minutes, pretty quick. And um, of course, you'll say, well, what about the um, space programs? They're off to Mars and, you know, space um, is, you know, you've got Elon Musk and the others, and they're, they're all uh, developing spacecraft, which are pretty amazing. And um, uh, so that's all happening, but that's only on the surface of things, because remember, there is no knowledge uh, of what's really occurring in terms of, of uh, space technology. And um, so I might leave it there and see if you've got anywhere. I know yeah. there are many um, rabbit holes, that's how I call it, the conspiracy theories. Yeah. And you can get lost in any of the rabbit holes if you stay there forever and you don't expand or open to other things. And there are more things beside conspiracy theories and mm. more in the, in, in the ascension. And I was one of them. But hey, the conspiracy theories help to wake up people. There's something is going on. But you can drop it <laughs> after a while drop it so you can move on and to understand the what is unconditional love and the unity and so forth because at the end even our ego i, I hear many people like oh i want to get rid of my ego it's like no you have to become friends with your ego because it's part of you and you have to forgive yourself or else you're going to be stuck forever where you are and that applies also for the cabal or whatever it is. And uh, we're gonna continue being stuck in there. So yes, I have seen that so much that I, I do try to stay away from them now, 
because there is no end for for them. It is continue. They choose because we have the free will to stay there. And talking uh, when you mention also the disclosure is not going to. I don't think it is going to be. Uh, the governments are going to tell us because it's, it's a business for them. Like the religion, it is a business for them. If they actually say it, what is going on in reality, they're not going to say it. The disclosure is going to come from us, people like you and me, or some beings that are hopefully uh, they intervene and uh, that I doubt it because like you said, we are not ready. The majority of the human beings, so just a few of us are ready for disclosure in reality. And the ones we, but not everybody is. There's still a lot of afraidness that the governments and the religions have installed. And that's what is still keep us in there. I'm talking about that. I wanna go uh, with that point. I would like to go, you chose in the name of the uh, 13 travelers at the Orion portal keeper. I have felt, and this is, I'm not talking about when I'm saying the Orion, I'm not talking about I have read or what other people have told me in Facebook or in social medias or what I, YouTube channels, whatever. I'm talking what I feel every time I connect to Orion. There is a, it's a heaviness in Orion, in what I have in my own experience. And, uh, and that's why when you say portal keeper from Orion, that's what it, it also bring my attention is what do you mean portal keeper from Orion? When I, I do feel that heaviness every time I just connect with, with that constellation. Okay. Um, yeah, the portal keeper. Um, uh, there's a connection. Okay. There's a line of consciousness. Uh, again, uh, we're speaking distance, time, and space, so we're not speaking of the fundamental level of oneness, which is a field of consciousness, a liquid light field, uh, which can be referred to as the quantum field. Um, but we're talking about um, a line of consciousness within form to some degree that starts with the so you could call earth the frontier of consciousness the wild west <laughs> the wild frontier of consciousness and um and so in the case of orion it's connected to the three pyramids on the giza plateau uh in cairo egypt mm -hmm. and i actually put out a post um you can actually super superimpose the three stars in Orion's belt over the pyramids and they fit exactly over them. So um, you could go in many different directions here, but basically the, um, uh, the two, the three uh, largest pyramids are, um, they have no hieroglyphs at all. Uh, and so, the, there's a certain amount of corruption that goes together with Egyptian archaeology because they want, it's nationalistic, they want to protect their own monuments and their own secrets. Well, so, um, as a Mexican, <laughs> as a Mexican, <laughs> I can understand that completely. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, you've got those wonderful Mayan and all of that down in the Yucatan Peninsula. And we're going to protect our own too. <laughs> yeah, I love this stuff. Um, uh, I, I'm not interested in conspiracy theories, but I am interested in um, ancient hi history. Um, because in the case of Egypt, uh, if they do use hieroglyphs, which they do in the Valley of the Kings and Queens, uh, up further north at Luxor, um, they, um, uh, the hieroglyphics are symbols. It's a, it's a language in symbols, but it's a visual language, right? A bit the way, a bit similar to the way the crop circles, which are going to, we're into April now. Soon we'll start to see crop circles, especially in England, although they happen everywhere. But in England, um, there's a website you can follow, which is actually called cropcircleconnector.com, but there are actually quite a few websites. Uh, but the thing about the crop circles is they're, they're like, um, they're a subliminal way of giving us a message. And it's what a beautiful message. I mean, I, I'm in love with the crop circles. I can't wait for them to come around each year. 
Uh, and it, it would help when you look at the circles, it will be helped to uh, look a bit like I did with my bathroom floor. Uh, it's helpful to look at them as, as a spherical uh, sacred geometry rather than two dimensional on the field. Mm -hmm. Just just visualize that. Um, and um, so there's the pyramids, there's the three stars in Orion's belt. And then there are two other important, um, there's one's a constellation. And actually when you look up at Orion, uh, which moves from the Southern hemisphere to the Northern hemisphere, as the, the earth will wobble. Um, and um, so on the one hand, you've got the Pleiades, Pleiades, whatever you, however you say it, the Pleiades and uh, those beings. And then if you look, 45 degrees to the right, you see um, Sirius. And Sirius is a binary star system. It has a, a very large star, uh, which is a little bit red, so sort of an older star. And around it is a, a, what they call a white dwarf, a very small star. And actually, <laughs> just as an aside, the white dwarf has another planet going around it, which is a water planet, it has no land. And our dolphins and whales, or Cretaceans, they telepathically travel there and backwards while they're here on Earth. That's their home planet. Okay. So, um, so now if you can visualize, we've got the, um, it's like becoming like a family tree almost. We're at the bottom of it. And then we're looking up and we're seeing Orion. And then we see um, Pleiades and Sirius. And then basically we go back to the center of the galaxy. What's important about the center of the galaxy is that it has uh, a huge black hole, um, which the Mayans, uh, your neighbors, <laughs> gave the name Hornabku. Uh, and Hornabku, I call her the, the mother of the galaxy. And uh, she is the great black hole. And I always, when I write that, uh, I write it W in brackets and then hole um, because she's both a hole and she's the hole. <laughs> and um, so, um, yeah, it's, it's, um, I, I love cosmology as well. It's like um, um, the black hole contains what they call singularity. And the interesting thing about information is when information comes from other parts of the galaxy, and it, 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 it's attracted like the black hole sucking in light, information is light, then it, it remains on what's called the event horizon of the black hole. Uh, but if you were able to get into that black hole, which I think you can energetically, then it has a point. It's kind of like an hourglass, you know, like that, that shape, you know. Um, it has a point in the middle here. And that's what's called singularity. So it's infinite mass. and um, uh, it, so everything is condensed into one point, uh, a pointless point. <laughs> and then from my point of view, it then extends outward again, the other part of the hourglass and uh, the sand glass, and uh, it becomes a white hole. And then another universe is formed from the white hole. And um, you could say um, at the beginning of this universe, there was a big bang and everything expanded by a process called inflation. And uh, within a trillionth of a second, the whole universe was pretty much in place. So it was an, an incredible bang. And um, so um, it would have created, so basically the universe comes from a black hole too, but behind this black hole is this singularity. And the universe kind of, the way I like to put it is because it goes out, it starts at singularity, and it move, evolves to multiplicity, and then it comes back again, returns to singularity. So it's can, it's like breathing in and out and in and out like that. I have a, so, um, do you have an answer to the question? Are you a a, a portal keeper of Orion? Because you just told me it was the three pyramids that they are pointing to the Orion. Uh, but but are you a, a a keeper of that portal? 
Yes, yeah, we the, the thirteen of us are, yeah. But it's um, uh, it's another really important thing about this. You could call it a role because it's physical, and we we've got a purpose in that. Uh, and uh, the purpose, I suppose, I would say that our purpose is to um, is to um, in, give people a direct way of going back to the mother, uh, but also to ins- exclude any negative energy that that might not be appropriate to come through that portal. And actually, Orion is uh, uh, Orion's a particularly unique constellation because because of this um, portal. Uh, intergalactic wars have been fought over it and um, so it has a certain kind of ominous feel to it and actually that that opens up something I really want to say but I'll I'll, um, so yeah we have the role but the role is all roles are temporary because the moment you become attached to your role you've created uh, separation again Um, you know see Consciousness talks through us, through with the capital, capitals. And the moment you take ownership for what you, for your role, uh, you become lost, basically. Yes. You've diluted it. Um, and, um, okay, I might leave that there and see where you want to go next. And the purpose in this timeline that you are here, what it is what is the timeline you mean what's happening now no what is your purpose or your mission or oh my mission yes oh uh, our mission the 13 of us um well actually uh, thanks for asking that it's um it's becoming clearer and clearer to me um the vision is always there but because i don't i live without an agenda i don't see the vision until it's appropriate so when you have a superpower or a lot of knowledge you tend to want to um hang on to it you know like or use it if you can't use your superpowers without without love without boundless love then you 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 won't develop them um so um uh, we would like to create a network of communities around the planet and these communities will be part of the, they'll be built on the grid. Actually, the crop circles are too. Um, they'll be built on the node points where the, um, where the geometric shape, which is actually a tetrahedral shape, um, where they cross. And um, uh, we're going to have, it's important to have a sphere and a pyramid at the center of each community because. Um, Atlantis was a very advanced civilization. In fact, some people say, well, towards the end, it fell apart, but that wasn't true, really. It was actually a a physical physical event that destroyed it, and basically a a comet struck the Earth, and it it was originally 10 10 miles wide but when it was flying, but it, it disintegrated into 10 pieces about a mile wide, and one of them hit... Well, one of them hit the um, the ice pack, the ice cap in Canada, and uh, all the water around the planet, pretty all the ice, pretty much melted overnight, and uh, the sea level rose by 178 feet, and um, uh, most of humanity perished because not only was the sea level rising, but when you get an impact like that, it creates a lot of dust and. Uh, it makes the planet dark. But there were survivors, a yes. few Atlantean survivors. and um, They went to different parts. Some of them, they went to Latin America, other ones, so they went... They went, they went everywhere, but they started in uh, southeast Turkey uh, with uh, a, a wonderful Neolithic monument called Ubeki Tepe. Te- Ubeki Ubeki Tepe. Ubekli <laughs> Tepe, <laughs> slightly hard to pronounce. And um, Ubekli Tepe uh, was 50 times as large as Stonehenge. Um, it, it contains all sorts of strange, the one, the part of it's been excavated has these uh, like T shaped, like a column with one balanced on top. Um, but it's it, the, the actual 
location is called uh, the Potbelly Hill. Uh, it's translated as, and uh, basically the pot, the pot belly, like a pregnant woman, is just full of um, stones in, in shapes and geometric shapes. And so it's interesting that um, the first, um, uh, the first uh, Egyptian survivors to come there, they also were the first, the first agriculture occurred at the same time on the planet. That's where agriculture originates from, because of course they had to, um, they had to stay in one place, so they had to eat. Um, and um, yeah, so Abakta Tepe is the oldest, um, the oldest man-made object on the planet that's, that survived the Ice Age. Yeah, I have seen that. So that's our, sorry, our mission is, um, I think I've covered it, is that um, obviously, I mean, I can talk about the new earth and what I, my vision for the new earth, but um, uh, maybe I'll say one thing about that, that um, women, um, I did say, uh, uh, did I say earlier in the piece, I may not have done, but women, when uh, some uh, uh, Homo sapiens first evolved on earth, um, uh, the human brain was in the process of evolving. It was getting, so the head was getting bigger. So women were suffering more and more blood loss and uh, mortality during ch childbirth. Mm -hmm. And um, so um, the men would go out and, and collect meat, hunt, hunt for meat. And they would bring them back to the women and the women would eat the meat and they'd get iron from the meat because they needed iron because they were bleeding, right? <laughs> That's the story. And um, so um, in the new earth, women won't bleed anymore. That's the good news, especially for women. Um, and uh, they will go back to the original story that I told about, the, about him and her, mother and father, uh, they, they will, um, when they make love, they will give birth on orgasm simultaneously to spirits. And these spirits, the beautiful thing is the spirits don't really need child rearing. Uh, they just, uh, they just uh, appear, appear fully imbued with all of their senses and their awakeness and so forth. Uh, the new earth is um, still physical, but it's uh, like... I would call it translucent. The beings and the planet is kind of three quarters light, shall we say. And um, so, so the women and and the couple don't have to look after the the the, the light being. Um, and so, it gives everyone much more chance to use their psychic superpowers and to develop their. Uh, abilities on G Gaia um, for for a thousand years. This is the old prophecy. Uh, people will be able to stay, and then they get a choice whether to leave or not. Yeah. Um, but the thing I really want to say is that the last creative power they have is the power to create stars. So human beings will create stars, just like the the original creator of the universe. So there's a lot to do. There's a lot. There's a lot to look forward to. <laughs> it's all sadness in there uh, because I understand. I am a woman, and uh, and I the religion is the one that I have put the feeling of women dirty and nasty when they bleed. I am yeah. maybe one of the few women that I will I loved when I was bleeding. Yeah, and I actually miss that time when I was bleeding and I, I I want to go back to that time when I was bleeding and there is uh, that comes from the religion that women were dirty yeah because they were bleeding so in reality it makes me sad thinking that in the new earth I'm not gonna have that womanhood that it makes me feel actually I can give back that to the mother at the same time there are many ceremonies ancient ceremonies before the church that they did not make us feel dirty. And the men felt it like that for them, but it's, that, that's their issue. 
unfortunately, the majority of the women, they reject themselves. And that's a part of them when they stop rejecting themselves. That's when actually they can become better themselves and even mm -hmm. heal themselves emotionally, mm -hmm. mentally, physically. Mm -hmm. And through our, uh, through our bleeding. So it makes me sad that uh, in, in this vision that uh, of that uh, new earth, that I hope it didn't happen, that we continue bleeding, but without the rejection that we have to ourselves. It's like men having problems with an erection. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and it's, uh, it's like they would say, why don't I have, gonna have any erections? And they will have mm -hmm. issues with that. The same applies for women when we're in our period. Mm. In our youthfulness. In yeah, our, I have, I have, sorry, go on here. So yeah, that would that, that would make me sad if that change. I would yeah. like to think that they will we will not reject ourselves. Yeah. Well, um how can I put this? Uh maybe I'll look at it this way. Um I mean, when you start to talk about the rise of the sacred feminine, which is not women really it's the it's the feminine side of us we're both male and female mm -hmm. and of course coming into sacred union is the is the joy of it um so um just imagine that um uh, when in, in family you have the father the mother the son and the daughter right so uh, there's an attraction of course between the opposites so the mother would sit opposite the son Imagine they're in a square, which is also a circle, of course, if you square inside of a circle, it's called squaring the circle. And if you have the mother opposite the son and the father opposite the daughter, then the one I want to talk about mainly, well, it, it, perhaps I'll quickly mention the others, but the one that I really want to mention is the daughter, because the daughter represents sexuality, the mystery, and the wisdom of the wound, kind of her essence, essence is. Now, the wisdom of the wound is, is, is the memory of the original cause, which is the story I told about the, the father and mother and the fact that they didn't get on because they hadn't cleared their emotions before sex. sex. And um, so when she menstruates, she's remembering that experience. And that's why it's very emotional for her. Because the mother um, did not teach her how to love herself completely, including her blood. Yeah. And that's a problem of the majority of the mothers that we did not teach our daughters how to actually love our femininity. I did yeah. that ceremony with my daughter when she had her period the first time. We yeah. celebrate it. And yeah. I don't know many mothers that do that with their daughters. Like this is a celebration because yeah. finally you can give this back to the mother and at the same time you can heal yourself. Unfortunately, yeah. I not knew all this information when I was younger. I knew this when I lost it. And I just have the pleasure to have it for the last time. And I heal myself from lupus, arrhythmia, from malgian depression and so forth when I give back that blood to the mother. So there are many things that there are many teachings that they've been hiding from men at the same time, even through women, because there is that rejection and that fear of not being accepted or this uh, to themselves. That they're, they're hiding all these teachings. And if these teachings have to come out, because it's like saying to a man, don't have an erection. I don't care what happened. Not even when you wake up, don't have an erection. That is wrong. You're going to be so happy when you don't have one. Really? No. <laughs> the same applies for women. The men enjoy their erection when they wake up. But the women, we should also, all of us, enjoy our time when we have our period. You speak yeah. beautifully. <laughs> you speak very beautifully. That's lovely. Um, but do you have something else to say? Uh, we're already. Uh... I've got, I, I can go on forever, but you just tell me when you want to end. It's fine. I think we've done a bit over what. Um, Will you have a last uh, message that you would like to say? An hour and a half, an hour and a half, yeah. Um, 
I really just want to continue with this thing of the masculine and feminine because. How about if we do another show that we uh, okay. we talk about the masculine and the feminine? Because I'd, lo I'd love to. to. Yeah, it needs to be talk about this. It needs to be more open, and not with this. It should not be a taboo. Yeah, we should open this this discussion. And, yeah. Uh, and so like that, actually, it is more open. And um, we need yeah. to talk about this. Yeah. OK, so if I can just sneak sneak the end of the, the description of the family. Uh, I've talked about the daughter with um, the mystery, sexuality, and the, the memory of the original cause. Well, the mother is, well, obviously, she's the, the mother. She's the childbearer. So she's, she's basically just full of compassion and love. Uh, the son who's opposite her is uh, he has what's called the purity of truth and he's um you can see jesus and the son as one really that, that there's always this um feeling of uh trying to maintain the purity of the message and and, and not dilute it with distractions and the message is always love boundless love and um the father is an interesting figure because um, the father is obviously structure um, and he's kind of the builder and the maintainer. So he's the creator and the destroyer. And so why do we need this destruction? This is really important because you can't create a new civilization until the old one has fallen away. And uh, that's the message of the father. Um, so he he is very important and so basically the the four archetypes their archetypes um are coming together again in the center of the circle to just be the presence of love and um yeah <laughs> everything everything is everything is cyclical you know why is it why is it so important this is probably my last message why is it so important that the universe is circular even the seasons and everything and you know you look at a tree and it, you know it's kind of branches are going out so it's obviously a bit symmetrical but at the same time the branches are bending and each tree is different from the next so there's this wonderful dance between order on the one side and chaos on the other and they're coming together and order represents the masculine, the father, and chaos represents the mother, the feminine. Okay, so um, uh, basically, the, why is the universe the way it is? It's because the very, f even though when you talk scientifically about matter, you talk about the quarks and uh, the Higgs boson, which is called the God particle. This is all sub subatomic things that are there. Uh, energies um, but when you talk about form then the original shape is the tetra tetrahedron now a tetrahedron is where well, it's an equilateral triangle but you have to imagine that again as a pyramid in three dimensions so um, uh, the universe is comprised of pyramids uh, this is not the same as the um, the square based one in Egypt it's actually it's actually just pure energy this is pure energy just moves if you put two of them together the masculine and feminine the, the masculine faces upwards and the feminine faces downwards and then you get the, the star tetrahedron uh which of course people in two dimensions call it the um star of david but it's not that it's the star tetrahedron it's again it's sacred healing i uh, saw sacred union you have that um, right yeah and um so the thing i really love is is the what's called the platonic solids which are really important even though they were somewhat um they didn't really appear in contemporary science uh, although you'll see them if you google them you'll find them on in google very easily uh, so basically there's a circle or a sphere and inside that sphere um, you can have a cube number one you can have a tetrahedron number two and each one of them the points touch the inside of the sphere uh, so then you can have 
the five sided, which is like a pentacle. Um, and then you have the icosahedron, uh, which is uh, has 12, uh, 12 faces. And then you have the, um, the dodahedron, which has five faces like football. <laughs> on all around with five faces um so uh, I, I love this stuff it's like um it co corresponds to the five inner senses or innocence innocence and um uh, uh the sphere is pregnant with the pla platonic solids <laughs> so plato of course goes back to um we go around in a circle and plato actually of course uh, talked about um, Atlantis. Um, so yeah, um, Thank you beautiful so stuff. We live in a beautiful universe, a mixture of order and chaos. <laughs> we need to later on make another another episode. So like that we can talk about all the way more things that I can, we have to talk. Okay, yeah, I love that. I really, really enjoy our conversation and I really thank you for your time. <laughs> Thank, thank you for your time and your, your effort in putting it together. It's lovely. Thank you so much. And, and I thank all your spectators. Please, if this resonates with you, share it uh, with your friends. And, uh, and we appreciate your presence. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. This is Monica Ramirez, and we're in Soul Talk. Thank you. It's so beautiful. meant to be in the great outdoors forever free Step back 